Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28. And God blessed them. And this is just Christ Jesus, the first man. Not Adam and Eve. They haven't been formed yet. So this is just the man. So God created the man in his own image. Oh, and God blessed them and God said, Be fruitful and multiply. Every one of you have a responsibility toward God. Because God has put the seed in you. Now I am not talking about natural childbirth. So don't get any strange ideas in your mind. We are talking spiritually now because you are a spirit creature. He says, I want you to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Hallelujah. You understand? Come on. You see, like God planted one orange tree. That's all. But now look how many orange trees there are on the earth. Because God put the seed in that tree. He planted one mango tree. Look how many mango trees in the world. Because God put the seed in that tree. God put the seed in you. What seed is that? It's the seed of God. It's the seed of Christ. And that seed can reproduce. So he said, I want you to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. We haven't done it. We haven't done it. Why? Kuchi. Because we didn't understand. You see, like me, I said to God one day, when I was studying this, I said, you know, Father, I, uh, my wife and I, we've had five children. And I said, we've got 17 grandchildren. And we've got now 12 great grandchildren. And I said, God, I think we have done our bit toward filling the earth. And God said to me, That's got nothing to do with it. Why not? I look at many, many Christian families today. And I will tell you what I see. I see almost the majority of them. Their children are not walking in the ways of God. I can tell you of pastors whose children are on drugs. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just saying to you that our natural procreation does not, does not guarantee that we will fill the earth with the kind of people God wants. Turn to the epistle of James. It's just after the book of Hebrews. James chapter 1 and verse 18. Chapter 1. Yes. And verse 18. You read that one. Should I read? You read that. Yakuwa rimwe 18. Yatubyarishije ijambo ry'ukuri nkuko yabigambiriye. 
kugira ngo tube nk'umuganura w'ibiremwa byayo amen so first of all it says ugamera aravuga ngo that god of his own will begat us ngo mu bushake bwayo imana yaratubyaye what does that mean God did not have to chase around heaven looking for a woman in order to procreate. Because there was no woman. There was no woman in heaven. But he could produce us. How could he do that? Because you see, spirit is male and female functioning together as one nuko ni umwuka kandi muri uwo mwuka ni ngabo ikaba ni ngore byose icyarimwe mu bwuzuzanye now we're talking spiritually here not physically ahanga rero turiho turaganira mu mwuka si mu mubiri spiritually mu mwuka spirit in you is male and female umwuka uri muri wowe ni ngabo ukaba ni ngore icyarimwe the truth is god never created a woman God never created a woman. The woman was formed by the Lord God. We're not going into that today. But he says, of his own will he begat us with the word of truth. That we should be a kind of first fruits. What's the first fruits? That's like the original. The original fruit of the seed of God. Because you came out of the original seed of God. That's who Christ is. Christ Christ is the seed of God. And you were in Christ in creation. You understand? Therefore, you are the original seed of God. And that original seed can only reproduce Christ. So the children my wife and I had they were not produced by the seed of God. How did we produce them? Well, we did that naturally. Which means my wife had to contribute an egg and I contribute the seed and when they combine a fetus is formed but that's not a son of God are you hearing this? you see so we can have all these children but if they're not going to be what does it say here they've got to be the first fruits of God's children God wants to fill the earth with the God kind of people. With the God kind of people. You hear this? That's what he wants to do. To do that, you and I need to reproduce the seed of God that's, that's in every one of you now, we are talking spiritually not physically this has nothing to do with physical reproduction this only has to do with spiritual reproduction and what does God want you to do he wants you to reproduce your true identity which is, which is Christ Christ in you Christ in you which is the hope of glory and if you will reproduce that Christ in you 
mukoro kwa kugaragaza Kristo then you have started the process nicho nje uzawa winje muri cha gikorwa of filling the earth with the god kind of people cyo kuzuza isi uyuzurisha uyuzuzamo abantu bimana bako bimana until you produce that christ ariko kujya kuva utaruzi utarazana ubwo bwo kugutya kristo that's the birthing of the seed in us ariyo muto iturimo which is the seed of god ariyo muto y'Imana which is the spirit in you ugomba kumenya ko ari wo mwuka w'Imana uri muri wowe and Christ is born in us hanyuma Kristo akatuvukiramo how could this be uti ibyabaho gutere one day an angel came to a virgin umunsi umwe malaika yaje ku mukobwa w'isugi and said to her aramubwira ati you are going to have a son abwira umwari w'isugi ati ugiye kuzabyara And she said, "Well, just a minute." She said, "I'm not married." Ati byashoboka gute ko hari nashaka. And the angel said, "No, no, Marika aramubwira ati, "No problem." Ati ntugire ikibazo. Don't worry. Ntuhangayike. Because he wasn't talking about physical reproduction. Kuko ntabwo yavugaga gukororoka ko mu mubiri. He was talking about spiritual reproduction. Ahubwo kwa rukororoka ko mu mwuka. You are spirit creatures. Come on. Kuko turi biremwa byo mu mwuka, turi mu. You were created spirit. Kwaremwe nk'umwuka. The body is not you. Uwo mubiri ntabwo ari wowe. The body is simply a house you live in. Iyo uwo mubiri ni inzu gusa utuye. Your identity is in the spirit, not in your body. Wowe uri umwuka ntabwo uri umubiri. So the spirit of God dwelling in you, the Christ is God's seed. Rero umwuka w'Imana uri muri wowe. Ariwe Kristo niwe muto y'Imana. So this girl Mary said to the angel. Noneho uyu mwari Maria abwira Malaika ati. How the world can this be? Ati koko ibintu urumva byashoboka. I'm not married. Sindashaka. I'm a virgin. Ndacyari isugi. And you tell me I'm going to have a child. Nono urambira ko ngiye kubyara. And the angel said. Noneho Malaika aramubwira ati. No problem. Ati ntugire ikibazo. Why? Ati kuki? Let's see how this takes place. Reka tere uko byagenze. This is in Luke's gospel, chapter 1. Biri mu ivangiri ya Luka igice cya mbere. Luke chapter 1. Luka igice cya mbere. And let me oh, oh, page. Verse 26. Mu rongo wa 26. In the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Mu kwezi kwa gatandatu maraika Gabrieli atumwa n'Imana mu mudugudu w'Igalira ya witwa i Nazareth. To a virgin kumwari espoused to a man his name was Joseph. Wari urasabwe n'umugabo witwa Gayosefu. And the angel said verse 28 came to her and said verse 28 Amusangaho yarari aramubwira ati Hail you are highly favored the Lord is with thee blessed art thou among women Amubwira ati na mahoro uhiriwe umwami imana iri kumwe nawe Every one of us today can reproduce Buri mwe wese agati yacu ashobora kororoka kandi akabyara Kristo And the angel said in verse 30 No no mareka yamubwira ku murongo wa 30. He's talking to you now. He's talking to you. No no niwe wari kubwira. He says. Aramubwira ati. Fear not. Twitinya for you have found favor with God. Kuko uhiriwe ku Imana. God loves you. Imana iragukunda. And God has chosen you. Kandi Imana yaragutoranyije. To reproduce his seed. Kugira ngo ubashe kororoka ubyare imbuto yayo. That's an honor. That's a wonderful experience. To give us the opportunity of absolute act, actually producing the Christ. Kugira guhabwa amahirwe yo kubyara Kristo. And so he says here, you will conceive in your womb. Aramubwira ati uzasama. But you men say I don't have a womb. Ariko aramubwira ati ntabwo mfite umugabo oh yes you do ushaka kuvuga kuti ntamugabo mfite ariko uramufite you have a womb just like the woman 
But not a physical one. But not a physical one. If God has put the seed in you, then the process of reproduction must also be there. Otherwise, there'd be no purpose for the seed to be in you. And you will bring forth a son. And you will call his name Jesus. Hello. You'll call his name Jesus. Can you begin to see a picture here? Two thousand years ago, there was a man. On this, on this earth. His name was Jesus. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yes, Christo. He was a man. Just like us. I don't think he looked any different. And, and nobody understood who he was. Okay, turn to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And in verse 13, Jesus Christ asks the disciples, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who do these people think Jesus Christ is? And they said, they don't know. Oh, he might be this, he might be that, might be something else. But he doesn't know. They do not know who Jesus Christ is. Why didn't they know? Because this man, who looked just like you, just like you, just like me, he just looked like you, but he could walk on the water. There's a man here lying 38 years at the pool of Bethesda. He's, He's never walked in his Bethesda. life. And Jesus Christ says, pick up your bed and go home. He's standing outside the tomb of Lazarus. He's been dead four days. And he says, Lazarus, come on out. And Lazarus comes on out. No wonder they didn't know who he was. Do you know who Jesus Christ is today? Because Jesus asked the disciples. He said, okay, the people out there don't know who I am. Now you boys, you've been traveling with me. You listened to everything I've said. You've seen all the miracles. Now, who do you think I am? Come on, this is the reality. And there was only one man who, who had the answer. And that was because the Bible says God had given him revelation. And so it was Peter. Peter. And in verse 18, oh, I'm sorry, verse uh, 16, and Peter answered and said, listen to this, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. What was Peter looking at when he said that? He was looking at a man. Just like me. Just like you. He was looking into the eyes of a man and he said, You are the Christ. You see, that's why God had to give him the revelation. That's why I can tell you, you are the Christ. You are Christ. That's who you are. You are the Christ. Well, where does the Jesus come in? Oh, Jesus is the man. Jesus is the body. 
Yesu nuyu mubiri. It's the body. Yesu nuyu mubiri. And the Christ is in the body. No neho Kristo akajya mu mubiri. Are you hearing this? Ese ibi muri kubyumva. Christ is in the body. Kristo ari mu mubiri. Of Jesus. Umubiri wa Yesu. What does that mean? Ibyo bishatse kuvuga iki? You are the Jesus of today. You are the Jesus of today. Christ is in you. Christ is in you. Christ is in you. Are you hearing this? Many of you are just going to have to hide this in your heart. And ask the Father, teach me, Lord. Because this is spiritual speaking kuko iyi ni mvugo yo mu mwuka but because it's spiritual don't think it's not real it's more real than anything else ariko kuko kuba ari by'umwuka ni mvuga ko atari ukuri ahubwo ni ukuri kuruta no kundi kuri so what did god tell the first man you know imana niki yabwiye uyu muntu wa mbere in verse 28 of chapter 1 in genesis mu murongo wa 28 what did he tell him? He said, I want you to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. With the God kind of people. And what has he done? He's done what he was told. You are all the seed of God. And your body is Jesus. He's filling the earth. The problem is that so few Christians know and understand this. I'm just a mortal human being. That's what people say. I am not just a mortal human being. I am a body which God says is Jesus in the sense that this body is where Christ lives. So in the New Testament Jesus never did a miracle. Jesus never did a miracle. Yes, I thought he healed the sick. No, 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 that wasn't Jesus. That wasn't Jesus. It was the Christ in him. It was the Christ that raised the dead. It was Christ that did the miracle. Jesus was the body. Yes, And that's what you are today. Come on. Oh, listen, I want you to I want you to understand this. Father. I release the Spirit of God over this people. This Father, let there be a divine anointing to touch this people. That Lord, even though this may be very new to many people, today, Father, there could be an awakening in these bodies, Father, of the seed of God. To know that that's who they are. And that they are here today. To do exactly what the Christ of God did 2,000 years ago. Father bless this people. Father bless this people. And open their understanding. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And so you see, it's a very simple story, really. God only planted one orange tree. God only created one man. Not two men. Only one man. But he put a seed in that man. 
and in that man is all of mankind. So that means the seed of God is in every one of you. Oh Lord, help us today now. Because, because this is most wonderful. When you understand, you will see that you can do what Jesus Christ did on the earth. Why did he say the things that I do you can do also? Was he telling lies? No, sir. He was telling you the truth. The, the truth is that you didn't understand who you were so you didn't understand that you could do that. Beloved, the world is filled with people today. Well, not filled, but there's a lot of them in the world. They say, I'm a Christian. I give my heart to Jesus. I believe in God. You know, but I can't do all those things Jesus did. That's the tragedy. We have, have rejoiced at what Jesus Christ did. And even going back further than Jesus Christ, remember, here's Israel come out of the land of Egypt. And in front of them is the Red Sea. And the Egyptian army is coming behind them. I said, Moses, we're all going to die here. And, and Moses said, God, we're, we're in trouble. What are we going to do, Lord? Help us. And the Lord said, what are you crying to me for? What have you got in your hand? Oh, oh, uh, uh. Moses said, I've got a staff in my hand. Well, what, what about it? What, what is that staff? You threw it on the ground. It became a snake. God said, pick it up. Oh, oh, but he was going to run away. God said, pick it up. So he picks it up as a staff again. You see, you're not just holding a piece of stick. This is a staff that God has anointed. Fetch it out over the sea. And he did. And a pathway opened up through the, the Red Sea. Come on, hear this? And you're saying to God today, God, I can't do all those things. I can't make the blind to see. I can't, make, I can't do any of that stuff. And he says, what have you got? What have you got? Well, well, God, I haven't got anything, really. Oh, is there anyone dwelling in you that might be able to help you? Oh, yes, I've got the Christ in here. You mean you've got the Christ of God in here? But he's already done all those miracles. There's nothing he cannot do. Israel was out in the wilderness and they were hungry. They had no bread. And God said to Moses, it'll be there in the morning. And the bread from heaven came down. You see, this is all the ministry of the Christ to a people. And for 40 years that bread was there. <laughs> They had no water. And God said, speak to that rock. And the water began to flow. And for 40 years, they carried that rock all around the wilderness. And the water kept running out of that rock. And that Christ dwells in you. That Christ dwells in you. Don't you tell me you can't do anything. You've just been looking in the mirror, haven't you? Said, I'm just a mortal human being. You are not a mortal human being. You are sons of God. 
are the children of God. The seed of God is in you. And when that seed germinates, and you allow it to, it will reproduce the Christ in you. And then you can do anything. Beloved, this message is so important because if we don't know this and if we're not going to function in this the purposes of God will not be achieved. The Bible says one day that every knee will bow to the Christ. One day every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I cannot see that happening under the present situation. You see, I come to you actually as a layman. I don't come to you as a professional preacher. Uh, I, because I had to go back to find myself. And it was only when I found myself that I could have helped anybody else. First 40 years of my life. I was pastoring. I was, in, I was in a church of 800 people. When God just took me out. God doesn't have to do this with everybody. This is just me I'm talking about. And it took two years. Before I began to see the daylight again. But God had become my teacher. And I had heard the voice of God which I had never heard before. And God had so blessed my life that I had to come to the place where I could understand that Christianity could work in a man's life. I had an accident when I was 12 years of age. And the doctors told my, my parents that I would lose my right leg completely. A truck went over it and just smashed it. But my father, my mother, they got the elders together and prayed around my bed that night. I've still got two legs. And I can still walk. God has done so many things for me. They thought I had a very bad heart. But you see, God did something there. Which changed things. I'm 81 years old today. 81. But God has so blessed my life. I'm still traveling the world. I've been visiting for a number of years. Ten, ten countries in the world. I started off with the Philippines and Indonesia and India and then came to Africa and Kenya and Rwanda, Burundi, Burundi and Congo, Congo, Ethiopia. I'm not doing all those countries to this today on this trip. But then United States, I do 10 weeks every year. 
And that's by the grace of God. And I can tell you honestly, that's all that keeps me going. The grace of God. People back home in Australia say, how can you do it? And, you, and they say, you travel by yourself. I said, no, no, no. I said, I've never been by myself. Christ is in me. It's Christ in me. It's Christ in you. You see? He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Let me tell you, if Christ left you for one minute, you'd be dead. Because your body has no life in it apart from that spirit. And you see, here we are. I know you've got a staff here of pastors. They're great men. They're wonderful men. They're doing the very best. But if you're going to just expect that they're going to do the whole work here in Kigali, you're wrong. God needs every one of you to function. Because you, you know who you are now. You are Christ. You are the Christ. And like I said, we're not going to run around and tell everybody we're Christ. But I'm going to show you. Turn to, Philip, uh, the, uh, to the Philippines. Philippines. <laughs> Chapter 2 and verse 5. And he says, Let this mind be in you. Chapter what? One. Is it Ephesians or Philippians? Uh, it's chapter 2, sorry. Philippians. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you. This is what's going to change your mind, uh, change your life. When it says, let this mind be in you, this must become your consciousness. The Bible says, as a man thinks, in his heart. That is what, that's what he is. Right? Do you understand that? Whatever you think you are, that's what you are. If some of you tell me you're old, then you're old. Because old is in here. I'm 81, but I'm not old. So I make it 81 young. Now I have to make it 81 young. As you think is what you are. So what does the Bible say? Let this mind be in you. Which was in Christ Jesus. Her being in the form of God. Are you in the form of God? How many of you are in the form of God today? How many of you? Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. God bless you. Because you were created in Christ. You're in the image and likeness of God. It's got nothing to do with what you see in the mirror. Because the Christ is in you. The Christ in you was never born. It was never born on this earth. It couldn't be. Your parents had no ability to reproduce or to produce the Christ. What could they produce? Your body. That's all. Your body. And God bless them for that. <laughs> I'd have a hard time getting around if I didn't have a body. 
So that's what my parents gave me. They gave me the body. But the spirit came from God. The spirit came from God. And he dropped that spirit into the little fetus before I was born. And it's that spirit that is you. It says here, being found in fashion of man, oh, uh, he made him, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. who being in the form of God, he thought it not a thing to be grasped at, to be equal with God. This just kind of, my mind can't hardly grasp this. That I am equal with God. Remember, what you think is what you are. Oh, I'm just a human being, Lord. Just a mortal human being. Oh, God, help me. Then that's what you are. But me, I am Christ. That's who I am. In the likeness and image of God. It's not something I want to be, uh, I need to grasp at in order to be equal with God. But, it says, Jesus Christ made himself of no reputation. You see? Yes is Ubusa. I do not come to you as some professional big time preacher. I come to you just as Des Walter. But of course I know that Christ is my identity. I know that that mind which was in Christ is in here now. It's the mind of the Christ. Listen. You all know about the little caterpillar. You know the little green caterpillar? Yeah. He walks up the tree, eats on the leaves, gets nice and big and fat, and that caterpillar one day forms a chrysalis around itself, and it's locked in with God. And one day, no, no, that little bag opens up. No, no, and out of there comes a butterfly. No, no, he a butterfly. Where did the butterfly come from? It came out of a green creature. <laughs> you, look at, you look at the little caterpillar. You look at the caterpillar. Can you see any butterfly in the caterpillar? No, 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 no. You can't see a butterfly in the caterpillar. And I say to the caterpillar, you know you can fly. You can fly because I, I know about you creatures. And really, there's a butterfly inside you, so you can fly. No, he says, you're crazy. No. You're crazy. I want to tell you that butterfly, I said to it, you know you're just a caterpillar, you know that, don't you? <laughs> and the caterpillar says, and, and the butterfly says, I'm not a caterpillar. Well, what are you? 
Noneho uri ikirere. Watch this and he just takes off and flies around. Njewe nwo kuguruka gusa. I'm a butterfly. Niki nyugunyugu. You see what a man thinks in his heart that's what he is. Kuko aravuga ngo uko umuratekereza mu mutwe we niko ari. What are you today? Ese wowe uri iki uyu munsi? Are you Christ? Uri Kristo. As you were created in the beginning? Muko mwitangiro ryo kuremwa waru ariko waruri. If you are, rero niba ari kuri then you can do anything that that Christ could do. Ushora gukora ibintu byose Kristo yimuka yabikoze. Finally the last verse I want to share with you. Ntoza arongo chapter 12. Murongo uri mu Baroma ico 12. Romans chapter 12. Abaroma ico 12. And verse 2. Murongo wa kabiri. Be not conformed to this world. Wakani ni mwishushanye nabi iki gihe. What does it mean to be conformed to the world? To accept all of the concepts of the world. What does a man normally say? What does man say about himself? I'm just a mortal human being. That's what most have said. But be not conformed to this world. But be transformed. This is the butterfly. Be transformed. From what you thought you were. Move mure cyo kuba ari umwana human being. Wa muntu ushobora gupfa. Aho gumwe. Ikinyugunyugu. Are you hearing this? Ese murabyumva. And the butterfly can fly. Kandi ikinyugunyugu cyashobora kuguruka. And so it says. Uh, well. Be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Wakani nushanya bikigenga ahubwo muhindukire rwose mugize imitima mishya. God wants to renew your mind. Imanye jako tugira imitima mishya. Because what you think is what you are. Kuko ibyo utekereza mu mutima wawe ari byo. And if you think you're just a mortal human being. Nibwira ko uri umuntu gusa usanzwe. That's all you will ever be. Niko uzaba nyine. You see. So today God is in that transforming business. Imana iri muri cyo gikorwa cyo kuguhindura. To take a mortal human being. Kugira ngo ifate wa muntu waruzi ko ashora kwipfira gusa. And by the spirit of God. Ariko kugumuka w'Imana. Cause you to know. Abashe kukumvisha yuko. That you are not just a mortal human being. Utari umuntu ushobora gupfa gusa. But you are that Christ. Aho ko uri Kristo. And that God put a seed in you. Kandi ko Imana yashize imbuto muri wowe. According to Galatians 3 verse 16. Muko mu bagaratiya gatatu 16 tuvuga. Where he said Christ is that seed. Avuga ngo Kristo niwe iyo muto. And that's what you are. Kandi nawe niko uri. Whatever that seed is. Icyo iyo muto iri cyo. That's what you are. Nawe nicyo uri cyo. Christ is your identity. Kristo niwe wowe. And when your mind accepts that kandi umara kubyakira mu mutima wawe. And you can say to me, ukambira uti, Christ is my identity. Ti Kristo nasanze ari we nge. Then you have begun a transformation. Uraba watangiye guhinduka. That would change you from a mortal human being. Guhinduka kuva muri wa muntu ushobora gupfa gusa into Jesus Christ. Ugahinduka ukaba Kristo Yesu. Then whatever he did 2000 years ago kandi ibyo yakoze muri ya myaka 2000 yose ishize you will be able to do today nawe uzabasha kubikora uyu munsi haleluya haleluya praise the lord imana ishimwe and may god bless you imana ibaho mugisha amen